this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to visit Pearl Harbor in 2020. I've broken this video up into three parts. First, everything you should know before you go to Pearl Harbor. Second, footage from Pearl Harbor itself so you know how to best explore the area. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you some frequently asked questions. Pearl Harbor is a military base and it's massive. Within the military base itself, there's four different attractions, the Arizona, the Battleship Missouri, the Airplane Museum, and the Submarine. As of today, everything at Pearl Harbor is closed except for the Visitor Center and the USS Arizona Memorial. Keep in mind, the amount of people that are allowed to go out on the Navy launch boat to visit the Arizona is extremely limited compared to how it used to be. Pearl Harbor used to get three to 4,000 visitors every single day, but we're in a different kind of environment now. Before, there used to be two Navy launch boats, each holding 150 people, going out every 15 minutes from seven or so in the morning till three in the afternoon. As of right now, there's only one boat going out every 30 minutes, starting at 8 and ending at 1 p.m. It's also limited on how many people can be in those launch boats due to social distancing. Normally they would hold 150 people, but right now their capacity is limited to about 50 people. In the video, I'll show you in the Navy launch boat how they're doing social distancing with markers on where you can sit, and keep in mind you have to wear a mask as well. You can opt to get to Pearl Harbor by bus or by driving. We opted to drive. It was about a 30 minute drive from downtown Waikiki. Keep in mind, this specific turn can be tricky. Don't take the first turn, take the second turn. When you arrive at the visitor center, visitor parking will be on the right hand side. You'll take a right, just here, and then shortly after, you'll take a left. Don't forget your mask and remember to social distance. When you arrive at Pearl Harbor, one of the first things to do would be first to get the deluxe audio tour. That way you can listen to it while you explore the exhibits in the museums. You'll go in and the gift shop will be on the left hand side. Do this first. Make sure you get the deluxe audio tour, not this one. This is the standard. The deluxe audio tour looks just like this and it comes with VR. You also get the chance to try out these Oculus virtual reality headset with the deluxe tour. The gift shop has pretty much everything that you would want. It's got souvenirs. There's also a small section for medicine, snacks, sunscreen. There's also clear bags that you can purchase if you didn't bring a bag and you wanted to have one. Now that you've got your audio tour, it looks just like this. It's a cell phone that has an app on it. I paid $12.50 for one of these. This one is just a smartphone and it comes with these disposable earphones as well. When you rent out this item, you're gonna have to give them your photo ID and also a cell phone number as well. Make sure you start at number 100, which is just right outside of the gift shop. This is the gift shop where I had rented this, and then 100 or 100 is where it starts. There's these numbers, like 123 and so forth. What you'll do is you'll type in the number into the smartphone here, 123. Because the theater is closed right now, Rather than doing the Arizona ticket first, I would recommend actually doing this first. So you have all that information before you go on the memorial. You can also bring this on the memorial itself. There's a few numbers that you can press when you get to the memorial, such as 119, 120, 121, and 122. After you pick up your deluxe audio tour, you'll come out of the gift shop and take an immediate left. This is the visitor center. There's two museums on the left, this lawn area here on the right. There's also some waterside exhibits. Make sure that you consult the map that you got from the gift shop so you don't miss anything. As of right now, the theater where you watch the 25 minute film is completely closed. We caught a nine o'clock launch boat to go over to the memorial. I would instead recommend be catching a later one. That way you have time to explore the museums first. This one is the Road to War, which is the first museum. And then just over there, across the way, is the second museum. So right now, I'll take you with me as we go inside the Road to War exhibit. For this video, I'm just walking through it pretty quickly so you can kind of see a little bit of what that exhibit has. However, when you actually go through it, 
I would give yourself at least an hour or two. That way you can walk through the museum, check out the audio portions that accompany the audio tour, and actually take time to experience it. Now I'll take you with me into the second exhibit called Attack. As you see here, there's a lot of audio tour signage to match the audio tour that you have. Make sure you look up, there's a lot to see. Same as in the previous museum, I'm just doing a quick walk through here, that way you can see how much there is on the exhibit but make sure you give yourself at least an hour to fully explore this. If you wanna to listen to all the audio, read all the signage, check out the movie here, as well as all the other parts of the exhibit. This last part of the exhibit was one of my favorites. It shows the USS Arizona today. This is pretty cool too, seeing how large the ship was and seeing how the memorial was built over it. Seeing it this way and then being on the memorial makes you realize how large of a ship the USS Arizona was. Make sure to take some time to walk the grounds. If you go towards the shoreline, there's also a spot where you can see the USS Arizona and the USS Missouri from the shoreline. Next, we're gonna head over to the USS Arizona Memorial. A ticket is required. Check the frequently asked questions at the end of this video on how to get a ticket. There's also accompanying audio tour number 119 through 122 that goes along with this portion of the visitor center. Don't forget to use hand sanitizer and take a look at the floor for the social distance markers. As a reminder, the USS Arizona Memorial is essentially a gravesite. Only use your phone for photos and video. Do not take any phone calls or make any calls on board the memorial. Check in by the theater a few minutes before your ferry time. You'll be ushered through the theater here by this park ranger to go to the Navy launch boat, which is on the other side. All of this ramp area is ADA accessible. Morning. Morning. There's also ramps to get you from the shore all the way to the boat and is ADA accessible as well. Remember to keep your mask on the entire time you're on board this launch boat, as well as when you're on the Arizona Memorial. Your seats are marked here in blue, so you can practice social distance. When you get on the launch boat, make sure you sit on the left-hand side. That's the side that pulls up to the USS Arizona Memorial dock for the best viewing. Once you disembark the launch, there's also ramps to get you on board the memorial itself. As another reminder, make sure to wear your mask while you're on board the memorial as you're entering an area with limited space. To this day, almost 80 years later, you can still see the oil that leaks out of the USS Arizona. This oil is commonly called the Black Tears of the USS Arizona. 
As you head to the back of the memorial, you'll see the shrine room that has the names of those lost. This also shows where you entered the memorial as well as the entire ship that's sunken beneath you. If you have any questions, make sure to ask the park ranger. There'll be one on the memorial at all times. Same as in the museums, don't forget to look up to see the top of the memorial. USS Missouri is in the distance. After about 25 minutes, you'll be ushered by the park ranger to the Navy launch boat just here. And the same boat that took you to the memorial will take you back to the shore. As you can see, mid-morning, the parking lot gets quite a bit more full. So for some frequently asked questions, first off, can I bring a bag? Yes and no. You can't bring any bag that offers concealment, but you can bring stadium style bags that are clear. I'll put links in the description box below for a full list of what is allowed. That way you can read it yourself. What should I wear? Keep in mind Pearl Harbor, when you visit the USS Arizona, it's essentially a gravesite, so use the same respect that you would if you're visiting a cemetery. Don't wear your swimsuit bikini tops, don't dress extremely clad, if you will. Wear something that you'd feel comfortable in, but also wear something that shows some respect. Commonly worn items are a t-shirt and shorts or tank top and shorts. Sandals are fine to wear. I would recommend wearing comfortable walking shoes because you're gonna be doing quite a bit of walking in that visitor center area. It's all outdoors and you wanna make sure to either wear or bring a little bit of sunscreen. I'll put links in the description box below so for some other tips that you might wanna check out as well. Tickets for the USS Arizona Memorial are recommended. In order to get a ticket, you'll go online to the website www.recreation.gov. Next, you'll search for USS Arizona Memorial. Click on that, and this pops up. You'll choose the date, you'll choose the number of tickets, and then a time slot. Here, you'll have to create an account. You can just click sign up. Enter your information and sign back in. This is what you'll be left with. It's $1 per ticket. If you're unable to get a ticket, check back on the website the day before at 3 p.m. You can also try to do some walk-up tickets as well. Bear in mind, it is first come, first serve, so reservations are recommended. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. It helps other people find the video. 